A bird may be called a flying animal, but when it comes to the dangers it can carry, they're a way more dangerous creature than your average animal. If you're in a forest or on the side of the street and you see a bird coming your way, Chances are it just wants to say hello and feed off crumbs that may be on your clothing. But if it's any of these birds, beware. They're difficult to escape because of their size and speed. So keep this in mind before you cuddle up with one of these birds and take a nap. These 20 dangerous birds you should really run away from. Number 20. Hawk. The testosterone levels of these birds tend to rise during mating season. The birds become very hostile as a result, seemingly losing their natural fear of humans, even crows, which hawks normally avoid during nesting season, will not approach the nest. This is why hawks are so dangerous. They will almost certainly attack if you get too close to their nest, even if you're not dangerous to the nesting birds or their young. The bird does not know that you are not a threat to it, so it will continue to view you as such. The fact that a human child is bigger than the hawk does not not stop the bird from attacking. I think God sent this bird to punish humanity, because hawks prefer to strike from behind, so you would not notice when it's about to strike. They can capitalize on the surprise factor. The hawk might start by merely flying close to you to frighten you. After hearing this, most people will flee far away from the area they think the hawk came from. You should also remember that hawks can spread diseases to humans and animals. If you see a hawk, look around to see if you can spot its nest and stay far away. Keep your dog on a leash at all times. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Lammergeier, Bearded Vulture The bearded vulture is well known among animal lovers for being the only known vertebrate to consume primarily bone as part of its diet. Interestingly and uncommonly, these vultures have red feathers. No, it's not just the tasty treats. This bone-eating bird is a fascinating subject of study. Approximately 70 to 90% of this rare vulture's diet is bone. Bearded vultures, like other vultures, are scavengers that subsist on the carpicus of other animals. However, it typically doesn't eat the meat off the carcasses and instead focuses on the bone marrow. Its beak is perfectly adapted to this type of feeding, and it can even digest and digest even the most brittle of bones. What's more fascinating is that the big bird has figured out how to crack the tougher, larger bones it uncovers. The fracturing of the bones makes extracting the marrow easier. The bearded vulture has a long history of being feared for its potential to cause harm. So they were eradicated from the Alps, only to be reintroduced not too long ago because of human hunting. Remember, it can't take the meat without tearing the flesh. Run to safety once you see the bird around. Number 18. Giant Petrel Due to their aggressive nature, giant petrels are also known as stinkers. They were referred to as gluttonous by South Sea whalers. Nobody else in their family can walk on land, so they do it alone. It wasn't until 1966 that the northern giant petrel and the southern giant petrel were officially recognized as two distinct species. The northern variety can be found from Chile and Argentina to South Africa and half of Australia, as well as the rest of the Southern Ocean north of the Atlantic Convergence Zone. You'll find the southern species from Antarctica to the subtropics of Chile, Africa, and Australia. The giant petrel is a large bird weighing up to 7.7 .7 kilograms and has a wingspan of up to 2.1 meters, 7 feet, 17 pounds. There is some difficulty distinguishing between the southern and northern giant petrels. However, the former is typically larger. If you encounter any unfamiliar marine life, your professional naturalist guide will be able to identify it for you. Both giant petrels have dark, mottled gray-brown feathers and a slender orange hooked bill that is used for grabbing onto slippery prey or picking at carrying. About 15% of southern giant petrels have a genetic trait that makes them nearly completely white, making them easily distinguishable. White signifies peace, but not with giant petrel. Keep off when you see this one. Number 17. Australian Magpie the magpie is one of Australia's most beloved birds. The pitch of their calls can range from 1 to 4 octaves, and they make a wide variety of sounds. <laughs> 
Both other magpies and potential predators need to be wary of the fact that Australian magpies are fiercely territorial. Unfortunately, some magpies view humans as a threat and will swoop down with a fast warning flight, occasionally making contact. While the Australian magpie is known for its docile nature, some individuals may become aggressive towards intruders including humans, who come too close to their nest sites during the breeding season. Remember that magpies are only trying to defend their young and are not out to hurt anyone or anything. August through November is prime nesting time. The eggs of the Australian magpie are a pale blue or green with brown blotches, and the female lays three to five of them. The gestation period is 20 days. After about four weeks of being fed by their mother, the chicks have grown their flight feathers and are ready to take the air. After only two years, their parents evicted young magpies from the nest. They do this until they are old enough to claim their territory as breeding adults. Poor weather, a lack of food, road traffic hazards, and natural predators all contribute to the early deaths of many baby birds. Number 16. Ostrich Ostriches, the world's largest and fastest running birds, are the largest and fastest running birds on the planet. While both living species of ostriches are restricted to Africa, it is possible to see these remarkable flightless birds in zoos, farms, and other captive settings worldwide. Ostriches can run very fast and cover great distances thanks to their strong legs, which they also use to kick their enemies when necessary. Ostriches safe or dangerous? What about human life? At times, ostriches can be extremely harmful. Wild ostriches may may avoid humans, but any animal will fight back if it feels threatened. During the breeding season, when the males of the species compete for territory and status, ostriches are at their deadliest. To protect their eggs and young, male ostriches will aggressively chase away intruders, even humans. Ostrich attacks on humans are extremely rare. Humans and these birds have shared the landscape for millennia, and many close encounters have likely resulted from activities such as hunting and egg harvesting. Recently, humans have started commercially farming these birds in Africa, Australia, and the United States, increasing the risk of harmful attacks. The vast majority of humans need not to worry about ostriches. Ostriches can be dangerous so people who work with them should always be prepared. Untrained people should stay at least 10 feet away from the birds. Number 15. Emu the emu, despite its name, is a dinosaur-era bird that cannot fly. They originated in Australia and New Guinea and can reach six feet. The fact that emus are so massive is enough to strike fear into some people. So now we want to know, are emus dangerous? Certainly emus can present a dangerous threat. Emus are typically harmless and peaceful birds, but they may be aggressive if they feel threatened. While protecting their young, emus can become violent due to their powerful legs and sharp claws. The ostrich's close relative, the emu, is the largest living bird species. Stronger than most other animals' legs, emus pose a threat to humans due to their aggressive nature. Their formidable claws can inflict serious harm on any living thing. However, in reality, almost any animal can attack and be dangerous if provoked. Understanding an animal's body language is crucial. However, many individuals lack knowledge on how to properly care for emus. Understanding the dangers of emus is essential before getting too close to one. They look like big birds, but their leg kicks are surprisingly powerful. To avoid making an emu feel threatened, it's best to approach it on your knees. An emu may move away or turn its head away to avoid interaction. Emu doesn't need a new friend, man. Just leave it alone when you see one. Number 14. Griffin Vulture the griffin vulture, one of Europe's largest birds, is also one of the best aviators. Perished animals make up the bulk of their diet. The adult birds are all alike in having a white head, neck, and rough-like color that resembles feathers. The short feathers emphasize the bird's long neck on its head and neck, which are accentuated by the ruff at the bird's nape. The flight feathers and the tail are much darker than the back and upper wing coverts, which are a bold buff brown. Between the scapulars and the alula, also called the bastard wing, were the feathers of the bird's thumb spread out. are two narrow bands of a light buff color giving the underwing coverts a tan appearance. The underparts of the wings are dark brown, while the belly is chestnut brown. When in flight, the wingtips are fingered deeply. Juveniles resemble adults except for a borrow collar and a darker back. Birds can live up to 25 years in the wild, but there are documented cases of captive birds living well into their 30s. Number 13. Cassowary 
Cassowaries tend to be elusive, especially in their natural rainforest environments. Rarely do they attack because they are not aggressive. On the other hand, if they become angry or provoked, they can cause a lot of damage. In rare cases, such as a 2019 attack on a private collection of caged birds in Florida, cassowary attacks have resulted in fatalities. It's easy to picture a time when dinosaurs and cassowaries shared the earth. The largest cassowary species can reach a height of 6 feet and a weight of 160 pounds or more. Even though they cannot fly, these massive birds can reach impressive speeds thanks to their powerful legs. They can swim well and move swiftly on land and in the water. In the rainforest, cassowaries have been clocked at speeds of up to 31 miles per hour. They can jump as high as 7 feet vertically thanks to their strong legs. Their legs can be used to deliver powerful kicks and their claws are so sharp they can sever or puncture the skin of any animal, including humans. Number 12. Peregrine Falcon Fast and imposing, peregrine falcons are dangerous predators. The falcon can catch other birds in mid-flight thanks to its powerful, sharp yellow talons. The swift flight and camouflage coloring of peregrine falcons makes them difficult to spot. Its back and head are a darker brown color than its wings and tail, which are a bluish gray. A dark brown tear-shaped mark can appear on the cheeks occasionally. The bird has a white chin and neck, and a yellow circle surrounds each of its eyes. Its white chest is marked with dark brown bars. In addition, if the wings are spread, you can see that they are barred and a dark brown. The average height of a peregrine falcon is about 1.5 feet, and its wingspan is about 3.5 feet, 1 meter. Falcons typically build their nests on cliff faces that are at least 1,300 feet high. Even the Grand Canyon Rim has seen them. Typically, the male chooses a few potential nesting spots, and the female chooses the final one. The incubation period for a clutch of 2 to 5 eggs laid by a female is between 29 and 32 days. The average lifespan of a peregrine falcon is between 10 and 15 years. As apex predators, peregrine falcons ingested a lot of DDT from the fish and birds they ate. DDT has led to the extinction of the falcon species because it poisons the adults and causes the eggshells to become too thin, eliminating any developing chicks inside. The adults perish and their embryos are unable to grow and hatch. Number 11. The Vampire Finch it's common knowledge that the Galapagos Islands are the natural habitat of the various bizarre species. The vampire finch is one of the most intriguing birds. Geospiza difficilis. The Darwin and Wolf Islands are home to a rare subspecies of the sharp-beaked ground finch that exhibits striking behavioral differences from other members of its species. The peculiar diet of this bird is the source of its common name. Blood from Nazca or blue-footed boobies is one of its occasional meals. Though the sharp-beaked ground finch typically subsists on seeds and insects, these foods are sometimes scarce on Darwin and Wolf. To supplement its diet, the vampire finch developed this unique behavior. When seeds and insects are scarce, the vampire finch will use its sharp beak to peck at a booby's feathers and skin until blood is drawn, and then it will drink the blood to supplement its diet. For some reason, the boobies don't seem to mind if the vampire finches feed on them. The evolution of this behavior is attributed to vampire finches eating parasites found in booby feathers. When plucking insects from boobies, finches have occasionally drawn blood down through the ages. Parasite removal helped both the finch and the booby. It was a win-win situation. The booby was free from the parasites in its feathers, and the finch got a healthy meal. The finches learned to adapt this process to get enough vitamin K. Number 10. California Condor The California Condor is the biggest bird in North America capable of flight. Its wingspan could be close to 10 feet. This massive bird can soar to dizzying heights of 15,000 feet when it takes advantage of air currents during flight. The Native Americans of the American West held condors in high regard and revered them as sacred birds. Breeding these animals in captivity is one of the most publicized attempts to save a species from extinction. Fossil records show that the bird's range was very large and included eastern states like Florida and New York. They once inhabited much of the continent before the arrival of Europeans, but today they are found only in a small portion of their former home. 
Is it true that condors primarily inhabit the deserts of central and southern California, where they roost on rocky cliffs? Other locations with significant populations include Arizona, Utah, and Mexico. Condors, like other vultures, are scavengers that eat the flesh of perished animals. They particularly enjoy the flesh of large mammals like cattle and deer. In the presence of a large meal, the birds may eat until they are so full that they need a rest for a while before taking to the air again. Condors may travel several miles daily for food, but they spend most of their time preening, sunning, and grooming in their roost. Number 9. Little Strike Thrush We call it the Little Strike Thrush a lee bird. In Australia, there is a species of songbird called the Little Shrike Thrush that is known to be poisonous to humans. Most of this bird's diet consists of insects, which is thought to allow it to store the toxins they ingest. The Batrachotoxin in A in this bird's poison is extremely dangerous. Poison dart frogs use the same toxin. Because of the poison's location in the bird's feathers and skin, any contact with those materials is likely to cause an adverse reaction. While similar to the little shrike thrush, this species can be distinguished by its black bill, gray back, and more heavily streaked throat and breast. The bill of the little shrike thrush is an attractive shade of pinkish brown. You might spot one on its own or two together. The female can be identified from the male because she has a pale feathered ring around her eye and an eyebrow. This bird, known as the little shrike thrush, shares shrike and thrush characteristics. This bird is of average size and has a generally unremarkable olive brown upper body and a lighter facial mask. In most cases, it's not readily apparent. Don't dare the little shrike thrush if you don't wish to die of poison. Number 8. Swans Swans, which belong to the family Anatidae and are the largest living waterfowl, are also among the largest flying birds overall. Over 1.5 meters 59 inches in length and 15 kilograms 33 pounds in weight are possible for the largest living species, which include the mute swan trumpeter swan, and whooper swan. Over 3.1 meters in length is not uncommon for their wingspan. They're considerably bigger and bulkier compared to the closely related geese, and their feet and necks are proportionally longer. Moreover, adults have a small area of bare skin between their eyes and bill. Males and females look identical in plumage, but males are typically larger and heavier. Specimens of the extinct flightless giant swan Cygnus falconeri have been discovered in the Mediterranean islands of Malta and Sicily, making this species the largest swan ever. Extreme climate fluctuations or the appearance of superior predators and competitors are hypothesized to have contributed to its extinction. Swans, without a doubt, are the most dangerous of all large birds because of their aggressive nature. <laughs> Wetland and wildlife habitats can be altered, posing a threat to humans. When they are upset, swans that are nesting can become dangerous. They're very possessive of their nest and young and might attack anyone who comes too close. Beware. Number 7. The Hooded Pitoe I think it's safe to say everyone here enjoys looking at birds. The hooded pitoee is a strikingly colored bird with a crimson underbelly and a black crown. The neurotoxin, homobotrachotoxin, is found in these birds' skin and plumage, causing numbness and tingling in those who come in contact with it. Because of this, these birds' skin and feathers are toxic. Analysis has shown that the birds' skin and feathers are the most toxic parts, while liver and heart, along with their skeletal muscles, are the least toxic. This bird is among the most toxic in the animal kingdom because of the poison is concentrated in its chest and belly feathers. Most of their venom comes from the insects and plants they eat. The beetle that the birds eat is likely the source of the dangerous batrachotoxins found in the birds that and also found in the poison dart frogs of Colombia. However, research into whether or not the toxins they carry are ingested by the tiny beetles they eat is ongoing. Infants are born without any detectable toxin on their bodies and appears only later in life. Brown Pitoe and its cousin, the variable Pitoe, are similar birds. They were the first known case of a poisonous bird. Number 6. Shoebill 
The bill of the so-called death pelican is the third longest of any bird species, trailing only those of storks and pelicans. Its unusual name comes from its bill being so strong that it is often compared to a wooden clog. A shoebill's beak has ample room to perform several functions. The clapping sound made by the bill, for example, serves two purposes. It lures in potential mates and scares away potential enemies. There have been comparisons between this noise of that of a machine gun. To relieve the heat of the tropical African sun, the birds often use their beaks to scoop up water. However, its most lethal function is an extremely effective hunting weapon. Daytime hunters and shoebills target amphibians, reptiles, lungfish, and even young crocodiles. They are slow-moving hunters that wade through the water looking for prey. When waiting for prey, shoebills may remain motionless for extended periods. Once the shoebill has located a potential meal, it will suddenly drop into a crouching position and launch a full-speed attack slashing its victim with the upper beak. A lungfish's head can be severed with a few quick thrusts of the bird's bill, and the fish is swallowed whole. Number 5. Red Warbler According to scientific evidence, the red warbler is one of the most poisonous birds. There is speculation that the animal's internal toxins provide a chemical defense mechanism against predators. These neurotoxic alkaloids make the plant tasteless, which makes it a poor hunting target. As a result, the neurotoxins serve as a shield for them throughout their existence. The red-faced warbler is a stunningly beautiful bird with a gray, black, and bright red pattern across its face. Although it's most commonly associated with Mexico, the species can be found breeding as far north as Arizona and Mexico. It builds its nest in a depression on the ground, but it forages among these tree branches and needles at fairly high elevations. Due to its restricted range and dependence on fully mature forests, it is at risk from logging in the area. After a female red-faced warbler finds a suitable mate, she starts looking for a nesting site in the forest floor's leaf litter, under low-hanging banks, or in the shade of young trees or ferns. She sits in potential nesting locations to see how she likes them. When she finds the right one, she builds a nest without the assistance of a male. When she is the most fertile, the male will dance around her and invite her to mate or scare away any other males who might want to mate with her, setting up the bed. Maybe it learns feminism from humans. Number 4. Spur-Winged Goose Spur-winged goose is a member of the family Anatidae and is an exceptionally fascinating bird. Even though it is a member of the genus of ducks known as the true ducks, Plectroterinae is its subfamily. Even though it does have some characteristics in common with ducks and geese, even though it's a quite unique animal. The word cock spur in Greek is whence the word plectoteris, which refers to the spur-winged geese, got its name. This refers to the spurs on their wings, which the males used to fight each other for the chance to mate during the mating season. The females do not have spurs on their wing. Even though females have spurs, they are significantly smaller and not nearly as pointed as the spurs on males. These spurs are extremely sharp and have a potential to be toxic. The blister beetles are a favorite food of the spur-winged goose, although they are known to be quite deadly. The geese keep this toxin in their bodies where it is stored for later use. This indicates that the meat of the spur-winged goose can be a bad enemy to those who consume them. They are even more dangerous because the poison is also contained in the spurs of their wings. They may look fascinating, but that's a trap to perish whoever thinks it's edible. Number 3. Brush Bronzewing The brush bronzewing pigeon is a little bird best known for its underparts' rusty brown coloration. There is empirical evidence that it demonstrates these birds to be highly toxic. It should come as no surprise that their toxicity is associated with the decrease and eventual extinction of numerous Australian species, particularly those that consumed brush bronzewing pigeons. The brush bronzewing pigeons get their toxic qualities from the seeds of the gastrobrilium, which have a high concentration of fluorine that is biologically bonded to it. The brush bronzewing pigeon has been able to avoid being hunted by predators throughout its life thanks to its adaptation to tolerate the presence of toxic levels of fluorine. 
This bird forages mostly on the ground in search of its food, which consists primarily of seeds, berries, and small insects. The brush bronze wing, like most other granivores, will ingest minute particles of grit and pebble to improve the grinding of seeds within the gizzard. Local movements are likely a response to the availability of food and habitat. The birds typically forage either single or in pairs, in contrast to the common bronze wing, which feeds in small groups while the other species feed in small flocks. The brush bronze wing sips its water around dawn or dusk, cautiously approaching watering holes after landing a short distance away. This behavior is also similar to other species. Number 2. Great Horned Owl the Great Horned Owl is the archetypal owl of children's literature, thanks to its long, ear-like tufts, menacing golden eyes, and deep hooting sound. While it can beat animals far larger than itself, this predator also enjoys eating smaller creatures like tiny scorpions, mice, and frogs. The barred owl is one of the most widespread in North America. It can be found in various semi-open habitats ranging from the Arctic to the tropics including deserts, wetlands, woods, grasslands, backyards, and cities. During the day, great horned owls are not active. At night, you might spot them perched on fence posts or tree limbs near the fridges or open areas. You might also spot them gliding across highways and fields with stiff, deep beats of their rounded wings. Their hoots sound like they're coming from a great distance and they stutter as they go. This common owl can be found in various forest types but is especially prevalent in young forests that border open pastures. Cities, orchards, suburbs, and parks are just some of the places they call home. Great horned owls can range from a dark sooty color in the Pacific Northwest to a lighter gray in the Southwest to an almost white tint in the subarctic regions of Canada. Number 1. The Secretary Bird this bird is a large bird of prey that lives on land. Its natural habitat is the sub-Saharan African grasslands and savannas, and it can only be found there because it's endemic to Africa. Named for the way its crest of long feathers resembles the quill pen secretaries and old clerks sometimes wear behind their ears, this huge bird has the body of an eagle, long legs, and a neck. Farmers in Sudan and South Africa kept secretary birds as pets to rid their fields of pests and snakes centuries ago. The secretary bird is a type of prey with a few different names. Not even a larger or more dangerous snake is safe from its fatal bite. If the snake is little, the bird simply scoops it up and swallows it whole. If the snake is huge and potentially hazardous, it will strike its neck or back by repeatedly stamping its thick sole on the ground. Just one good kick can do the work of five of them. The bird eats the snake after it has stampeded on it. When you do, proceed with caution. One swift kick from this bird will have you digging your grave in no time. Remember to stay clear of these birds when you see them. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more.